Hey, I'm Kier, and this is that vlog thing that I'm doing. I've talked a bit about ghosts uh, in the last few days. The, the uh, spiritualism craze, the uh, different types of ghosts, and possibly some of the reasons why we don't see ghosts all over the place all the time. Uh, today, I want to talk a little bit about um, what you need to put together if you want to actually go out and really look for ghosts. Uh, if you want to go out and, uh, you know, investigate a haunting that someone has told you about, if you want to really try to bring a little science into the whole ghost thing. Uh, so that's, that's what's on deck for today. Uh, there's a handful of little bits of equipment and some other really, really important things. And the first of those really, really important things is permission. Uh, you need permission to investigate most places because chances are they're not your place. Uh, so, you know, even public places like, like the Gettysburg uh, Battlegrounds, uh, a lot of these places close after dark uh, and you're not supposed to be there after dark. So if you can, try and get permission to be in these places, and that way you don't have to worry about your uh, investigation being interrupted by, you know, a security guard showing up and asking you, maybe nicely, maybe not so nicely, to leave. Uh, that also lets you know if there are going to be other people around. Uh, if it's a building or a house and there's permission that needs to be gotten, uh, you can ask the other, uh, whoever you're getting permission from, if there are going to be other people around that night. You can find out if they have uh, someone that comes through and checks for security, if they have any maintenance scheduled, uh, if there's any things with the HVAC unit that go on at night, uh, and that will help you eliminate some potential false positives from your investigation. Uh, it will also allow you to maybe do something like turn off the electricity so that you now don't have all the random electromagnetic fluctuations that can come in from things like bad wiring, uh, which is, you know, very important because one of your key pieces of equipment in uh, ghost hunting is going to be an electromagnetic field detector of some sort. Uh, there are dozens and dozens of different types at all different price ranges, some distinctly better than others. Because one of the key ways to detect paranormal activity, especially haunting activity and ghosts in particular, is through fluctuations in the electromagnetic field, uh, having an EMF detector uh, can be exceptionally helpful to figuring out, first of all, the baseline of a section of room, and then secondly, when something changes along that baseline. Uh, if you've watched any of the shows like Ghost Hunters or Ghost Adventures or, or any of the handful of other shows that have been out over the years about people conducting actual paranormal investigations, parapsychological investigations, of haunted places. They always have those little detectors and they uh, keep track of what the numbers are and when they go up and when they go down. Uh, and when you hit things like cold spots in a room, you can see if there's a change in the electromagnetic field. Now detecting cold spots can be done naturally by just walking around and going, huh, a little chilly here. But if you want to be a little bit more precise about it, a nice digital thermometer is good. Now you have to be careful because there are some out there that I've seen used on shows uh, that are infrared thermometers, uh, but those are best for measuring temperatures of surfaces, not air temperature. So if you want to see if uh, the seat is warm or colder than it should be, uh, one of those is great. But uh, for measuring air temperature, just a regular uh, digital thermometer uh, is good. Be sure you're aware of the error range of your thermometer. Uh, all electronics have a certain uh, range that they're accurate within. Cheaper things tend to have a wider range of up to, you know, a degree or three. So 
that's not necessarily going to get you the most specific or accurate reading of temperature changes and may produce, again, false positives. Get a good thermometer, uh, one that, again, nice digital readout. Uh, so you don't have to wait for the uh, mercury or alcohol to rise and fall in it. Uh, also makes it easier to see in dim or dark light. Uh, so those are the two key things, your, your EMF detector and your uh, digital thermometer. Uh, a camera is also really important. Um, a lot of things uh, out there seem to appear better in images than in real life when you're there. Some of that may be due to different sensitivities, originally of film and now of uh, digital cameras. Or the simple fact that you may be one of those people that's not particularly attuned to seeing the paranormal activity. Uh, in which case, the camera may be a more objective way of... Uh, well, it is a more objective way of pulling in the scene. Things that are important with the camera, be sure your lens is clean. Be sure that if you have a strap on it, you're always aware of where that strap is. Uh, I can't tell you how many, oh no, I got a picture of ectoplasm shots I've seen on the uh, online that are just the camera strap catching the camera flash because it's drifted in front of the, uh, in front of the lens. Uh, so if you have a strap on the camera, take care that you have that strap secured so it doesn't end up in front of the lens. Uh, the same is true if you have long hair. Keep that out from in front of the camera lens. Uh, that creates false positives. Uh, if you're going to be shooting uh, where there's light uh, and not using a flash, or if you're going to be shooting in the dark and using a flash, be aware of how much particulate matter or insects are in the area. Because uh, there's a lot of pictures of orbs out there that are pretty obviously out of focus bugs or dust catching the camera flash. Uh, and again, if you start putting those up and saying, look, I've found evidence of ghosts, people are going to laugh at you and you're going to make life more difficult for everyone else. Uh, so careful with all of that stuff. Uh, an audio recorder uh, is also really important uh, because, again, especially when you get into the world of electronic voice phenomenon or EVP, there's stuff that shows up in recordings that we don't necessarily hear at the time. Uh, and it also provides another frame of reference for when you are going back and taking your pictures. So if you get a decent uh, digital audio recorder that has timestamps on it or a time code of some sort, uh, that can match up with when you took a picture. So you can now uh, collaborate and, and correlate the different bits of data that you are collecting. Uh, and the same is true if you bring a video camera along, which of course is the case in all of the TV shows you see. They have numerous cameras uh, along. But if you're conducting your own investigation, uh, it's very important to document stuff in a way that can be matched up with all of your other data. Uh, and also, uh, you know, so you can keep track of the different people in your investigation team it may not be a good idea to have 15 people on a site uh, because, well, you're going to have extra noise that you're going to worry about. You're going to have uh, a crowd that gets in the way uh, and may disrupt any haunting phenomenon that you do come in because all it takes is a couple of people that don't really believe or a couple of people who really do believe to either ruin your chances of getting anything or start creating false positives through their own actions and reactions to things. Uh, it's, like I said, tricky business because it's not a hard science. And that's a shame. It makes it difficult to even come close to proving anything. But if you're going to investigate it, keep your team small, keep your team professional, Keep them under control so you know where everybody is, uh, so you can account for random shadows. Nope, nope, that's just John out back with his flashlight exploring the backyard. You need to know these things. 
those are the key, absolute key things. There's lots of other additional equipment, the laser grids, the uh, multiple infrared cameras, the, the uh, heat vision cameras, night vision stuff. Uh, you can spend tens of thousands of dollars outfitting a ghost hunting troop, uh, but you don't need to. Uh, you need an EMF detector, you need a thermometer, you need a camera, you need an audio recorder, and you need some willing people on your team. Uh, and above all else, you need permission to be in the place you're in. Uh, without that, you can't account for all sorts of other things going on, and it's going to be really awkward to try to do the research that you need to do later if you're asking the people who have you now snuck around uh, about details about the place you weren't supposed to be. Those are the key things you need to go in and conduct a ghost investigation. Uh, if you've ever conducted a paranormal investigation at a place, uh, leave me a message down in the comments, get in touch with me using that link in the description, and tell me about it. What kind of equipment do you use? What kind of problems have you run into? What kind of amazing, weird activity have you seen, experienced, and recorded? Uh, let me know. So if there's anything uh, that you liked about this, uh, give me a thumbs up down, down there. Uh, if there are uh, other people that you think would be interested in this, share this video with them. Uh, and if you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button and get notifications in your inbox every time I put one of these out. Uh, it's been daily for a while now. Uh, we're going to keep that up until the end of the year. And uh, we got another few paranormal ones before we uh, figure out what we're going to do after Halloween. So I'm Kier, and that's it for today. I guess I'll see you tomorrow.